Hey everyone, for this lesson we're going to be combining ideas from our first lesson about centripetal motion and our third lesson about universal gravitation in order to come up with an equation or multiple equations that model the motion of planets in their orbits. Before we look at any equation we got to do a little bit of vocabulary. First vocabulary word is barycenter. Barycenter is defined as the center of mass of two bodies that orbit each other. So this would be like the larger orbiting body, this would be the smaller orbiting body, and this plus sign right here, or these crosshairs, would be the barycenter. In the problems that we're going to be looking at, the barycenter is going to be located pretty much near the center of our larger object. So we can also think of the barycenter as the thing that is being orbited. The first rule of orbit is that planets or satellites, satellite is really anything that orbits a larger body, make elliptical orbits around their barycenter. It's not perfect circles. Instead, they are these oval-shaped ellipses. The second law of planetary orbit is that the planet or the satellite moves fastest when it's closest to its barycenter and slowest when it's farthest away. In order to connect the motion of a planet to the ideas that we learned in our first lesson, the orbit needs to be circular or nearly circular because then we can apply these concepts of uniform circular motion and centripetal acceleration. For example, say we have a mass of little m orbiting a larger mass of big M in a nearly perfect circle with a radius of r and it's moving with a tangential velocity of v. We can find an expression for the speed of that planet or that satellite using ideas of centripetal force. So in this case, the only force acting on this satellite is the gravitational force between m and m, big M and little m. That force is a centripetal force since it's causing circular motion. So we can replace centripetal force with mv squared over r and replace the gravitational force with gmm over r squared. Notice that the little m's cancel, one of the r's cancel, we take the square root of both sides, and we get an equation for the velocity of a satellite in a circular orbit. It's equal to the square root of g, our gravitational constant, times m, the mass of the object being orbited, divided by r, which is the radius of that orbit. This is actually not an equation that's on your formula sheet. It may be one that's good to memorize, at least so you know the relationship between uh, mass of the satellite, which has no effect on orbital speed, mass of the planet being orbited, and the radius. Um, sorry, between those two variables and the velocity, because uh, those are good to know. But it's pretty easy to get to here from Fc, or centripetal force, equals the force of gravity. Both of these equations are on your formula sheet. So it's not that hard to go from here to here using a couple of algebraic steps. Now that we have an expression for the velocity of a satellite in a circular orbit, we can now find an expression for the orbital period. Period is defined as the time in seconds for one complete cycle. So that's either something that is revolving around something else, something that is oscillating back and forth. We'll talk a lot more about this idea of period later in our simple harmonic motion unit. But back to this example. We have this satellite of little m orbiting in a circle around big M. We know that velocity is distance divided by time. The distance that this little mass is going to travel in a single cycle or a single orbit is the circumference of this circle. The circumference of the circle, of course, you can find by taking 2 pi times the radius. The time is going to be the orbital period. The symbol for period is a capital T. We also just found an expression for the velocity of a satellite in circular orbit. So if we plug that in, do a few more algebra steps, we can then find an expression for the orbital period. We can either leave it in this form, 2 pi r times the square root of r over gm, or we can put that r underneath the radical, so we have 2 pi times the square root of r cubed over quantity gm. Now this expression is a bit harder to generate based on the equations that are on your formula sheet. Also, this is not on your formula sheet. But here are the main ideas that 
we need to get from these equations, or these important relationships between variables. The mass of the satellite does not affect its speed or its period. It doesn't matter if it's the size of a moon or the size of a car. If two satellites have the same distance away from the same planet, they will orbit with the exact same speed and period. Increasing the mass of the object being orbited. Uh, it doesn't really make sense to increase the mass of the barycenter, but the object being orbited increases the speed and decreases the period. Increasing the orbital radius decreases the speed of a satellite and increases the period. We'll take a look at some conceptual problems when we get to class. Hopefully we won't run into anything where we're having to use that much algebra to solve a physics one problem, um, but it is something that's come up in the past. See you guys soon.